thought he said he was going to. No, you're. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the Ordinance Committee meeting of Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. Um, it's 9.30 a.m. And I'd like to everyone to know that Councillor Katarina is here, Councillor Blaze is here, um, Town Manager Hall is here, and Tracy is also here. Okay. <coughs> Item number three, approval of the minutes from February 17th, 2015. So approval. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Item four. Discussion on parking at Pine Point. Um, at our last meeting, I had sent out, it was, well, actually it took me a couple weeks, to send out um, an email to pre pretty much all the businesses were, that were in that area. Um, the clam bake, the snows, uh, let's see, um, Landing. The landing. Um, there was one other, Tom. Uh, ready Seafood. Yes. Bought Ness and Duck. Yes. Yep. Um, the only, unfortunately, the only people that we didn't hear back from was the landing, and I did try to contact them multiple times. Um, so we're going to proceed, unfortunately, without them. Um, I was kind of hoping for their input since they have a lot of spillage over into the Clam Bakes parking lot, and mm -hmm. I was sort of hoping that they would you know, come to the table with something to right. add. Um, we're going to meet on Thursday at the Glam Bake, okay. um, a group of us. And I wanted to ask you, Tom, do you think it's prudent, would there be a need for anyone besides me to be there from the town? You um, know. Uh, on timing, I can certainly be there. Yeah, like. yeah. And, and then I didn't know, um, we don't have a time yet, but I'll let you know by the end of the yeah. day today. Sure. Um, they I just. Think, I think it's always best to have someone else yeah, and I think, too, just where you will know a little bit better yeah. about what we can and, you know, I might not know exactly what yep. we can and can't do. And uh, I did have some conversations with the Black Tie Company, who is oh, the owner-operator of the landings now. Good. Go ahead. Well, um, I think previous to your account, so oh, okay. I'll, I'll try it through my sources. Please, yeah. Them, so as soon as I know the time, yeah, I'll, I'll let, let you know today. We try to get some I have a connection with Black Tie Catering. Okay, so if you Yeah. If we, don't if, get anything, get yeah. if we don't get anything through Tom, we'll let you know. Okay, for they, sure. They, they do have uh, certainly some impact on the yeah. street issue. It's, it's unique to their business. I agree. But uh, nonetheless, it would be great to have them part of the conversation. It's small enough that it's a shame not to have them there. Yeah, and, and the great but thing. They've caused a lot of problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the great, the, the wonderful thing is, um, <laughs> Even though a lot of their spillage is going into the clam bake, the clam bake is, I mean, they're at the table. They are very willing to try to work through this out and come up with a solution in a positive way. Yeah. So it would be nice if we could do that. Yeah, I mean, there are multiple issues. That issue is really an issue between two private property mm -hmm. owners, um, but many of their events do mm -hmm. end up having on-street parking as mm -hmm. well, which is it's certainly in our control. Right. But if we can help broker a, uh, something between those two private parties, all the better for it. Yeah. Um, as for the on-street parking, uh, I know that we have another counselor who's looking into uh, the metered parking, which is um, an issue that we're having in a couple different areas of town. Um, so hopefully maybe by our next meeting, Counselor Donovan might, maybe we could have him here, and he might be able to give us some information about what he's gathered about metered parking. Um, because that, like I said, that does apply to a couple different areas of town. Do you guys have anything you want to add to that before we? No, I mean, I think without meeting with the parties involved, it's premature to do anything mm -hmm. further on this, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would suggest we table it again to the next ordinance meeting. You? Yeah. Why, yeah. Why would that? Okay. So can someone make a motion? I move that we table Pine Point Parking to the next ordinance meeting. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. <clears throat> Item number five is 
the report on the parking at Higgins Beach from myself. Um, so we're making progress. I think I think we're making progress. Um, we did have a uh, what was I hope to be a final meeting tonight with um, some of the proposals that were put forth. Unfortunately, I had to cancel that um, due to uh, family issues that I need to be at. Um, and so we're looking at the next couple of weeks. I just need to talk to Tracy about finding another date and time. And so hopefully by next meeting, um, we'll have a proposal to bring forth to the ordinance committee. Um, the great thing about it is that uh, everybody who's at the table is there for a reason. It's all for a love of Higgins Beach. They all want to preserve it. Um, there's definitely two distinct sides of it. And, you know, we knew that was going to happen just from mm -hmm. our initial talks. Um, but I think that everybody sees the big picture and what we need to accomplish. And I think there's definitely been some give and take. Um, and so hopefully in another well, I hope I actually, by our next meeting in a month, we'll, we should have a final proposal uh, to put forth before the Ordinance Committee. And what I'll do is have someone from them, probably a couple of them, present that. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll remove myself from that part of it. Because at this point, I haven't voted on anything. I'm just kind of being a mediator. Okay. Uh, Quick question, yeah, if I could. Um, are you finding there are areas of agreement, more areas of agreement between folks, or are you still kind of out there? <laughs> uh, I think we're, we're agreeing on, they're agreeing on some things. Okay. Um, That's good. There's some wiggle room, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that one really good thing that we did was at our last meeting we had Chief Moulton come in. Right. Um, and he was able to sort of, even though I had sort of pointed out what was legal and what was not legal, it right. helped to have him come in and, and sort of define. Right what some people were doing was legal and what some people were doing was not legal. Right. Um, and I think that was very helpful. Um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a hard line there between, yeah, it's legal, but is it right? You know? Right. So that, I think that's where people are struggling. And, and where I'm coming from with this is I just think it would be helpful if, and, and you know, not that I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell you to run the meeting, but no, no. if you put up like on one side everything everyone agrees mm -hmm. on, and then it's like, good, we all agree on these, so we don't even need to discuss that anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's work on the, the other I pieces. And I didn't know if. You well, know, I you think had that's done what that. they're doing now. Is I've forwarded the proposals yeah. that I've gotten from everybody, so it's giving them all time to adjust to, oh, to read through those proposals. Yep. Um, we've gotten probably five or six different ones. Um, and the oh group good. has those, and okay. so they're able to kind of go through them yeah. and sort of pick out what they'll work with okay. and what they won't work with. Okay. So good. I'm hoping that we're going to get to that point. But that'd, that'd be good. A good, idea, <laughs> a good idea. Good. Thanks. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. I, I saw a proposal come through yesterday. It mm -hmm. had three points to it. I'm yes. not sure where that Was that forwarded by me? Yeah. Yep. Um, that I was from the resident. Office. Okay. Uh, two of the three proposals need a little further study. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I, I'll verify with the police department, but I, I don't believe but for a school zone you can have a speed limit less than 25. Right, um, right. And then with respect to three-way stop, there needs to be right. some engineering right. uh, support and justification mm -hmm. for it. Um, yeah. So I'm not saying that it can't be done. It's yep. just saying that it's, it's not necessarily just a policy decision. Right. Some, some engineering behind well, and I think there's a couple other pieces, and I'm not sure if it's on that one or not, but um, also they were talking about changing the direction of traffic, um, and so I'm not sure. That is something that's really right. a policy decision. Right. Uh, and our quick read is that it won't have any impact kind of operationally okay, on snow plowing or school bus or any of that sort of stuff. I so that's really a decision that we could make. I believe so. Yep. That's good. Um, okay. I'll have that verified with staff. Uh, and I, this is before my time, but I believe that there was, and as you might recall, there was a, a, a big meeting that laid out the current traffic plan and flow of streets oh, and one ways in which direction. There and was. Um, and I think that was a bit, uh, quite a, a, a process, a project, if you will, that involved the neighbors to decide what the final result was. Yes. Is that before your time, Ed? Yeah, but that was, that was done prior to the parking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, and and I think what they're saying is, they all agree that at the time that was what they wanted. 
but now that they've, a lot of them live there, and, and a lot of them live year-round, um, and obviously the, the biggest hurdle is during the summer, is if we were to change the flow of traffic on one street, it would actually, a couple of the numbers I saw, 80 to 90 cars a day would get out of that clog of drop off, in that drop off area. Does that sound maybe right? Or do you think We're the numbers should sure. be less? Well, we'll find out. I'll find out. Um, and I think the other thing they were looking at was, um, and this is something that we had talked about, was moving some of the drop-off, one of the drop-off areas. Right? Yeah. You had mentioned that. Um, to the base of Ashton. Right. Anyway. Yeah. We're not moving it, but... Extending. Extending, extending it. it. Right. Um, just to give them more room and... Mm -hmm. Right. So do you envision there's multiple different proposals and interests? There is. Will there be one package yes. that comes to this group yes. that you'll consider? Mm -hmm. Well, when that's boiled down to that one set of proposals, whatever, that might be multiple parts, certainly uh, if you could share that with, my, with me oh, and yeah. my staff, provide some it's input just so we have some guidance. I I'm hoping that we'll have this meeting within the next week because, like you said, and what, what you've noticed is we're going to need some help with from your department as sure. to whether or not we can even do some of these yep. things. So um, as so soon as you have helping. those, send mm -hmm. them my way, and I'll, and I'll get staff input. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And then I'll also get copies to the whole ordinance committee so that they can take a look at it and see if they have any input before yeah, be we move forward. Super. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, do you guys have any more questions on that? No. Are you ready to move forward? No. Thank okay. you for yeah. thank you for taking that yeah. on. Yeah. Um, item number six is discussion on fireworks. Uh, this was my issue. Um, it's been an issue that I've, I've talked numerous times about over the years. Um, and I want, I'm going to say a couple things and then I want Jean Marie to share with what, with what you shared with me uh, when you came in this morning. But a couple years ago I had brought up fireworks. And when, at the time when I brought it up, I got uh, numerous emails from um, a couple from fire department people who didn't want their names listed, which I can understand. Um, that live here in Scarborough, and some of them live in areas um, with a lot of close houses. Their houses are on, you know, in the beach areas mostly, um, where houses are very close together. And they're watching people light off these fireworks and literally waiting for their house to catch on fire because the houses are so close together that the fireworks are literally raining down on top of their homes. Um, and so at the time when we talked about it, I had promised a couple of people that this would at some point be on the ordinance committee's agenda. Um, and so that's why I wanted to see it on here. Um, I know it's going to take uh, a lot more research and a lot more time before I, I haven't, I've read, briefly read through the ordinance. Um, you know, when you look at it, to me, I don't see a lot of red flags, but when you talk to people about it, I can see why there's people that have issues with it. And like, you know, Councillor Blaze had mentioned, you know, he gets up July 5th and his backyard is, in, in the back of his house, is literally covered in fireworks debris. So I can see why people, especially that live in these beach communities, you know, my, my neighborhood is, you know, most of the houses are sitting on three plus acres. So it's not as big a deal as it as it is for these other people. So I just think it's something that we sort of need to look at and see, um, you know, if there's anything we can do to make this a little bit better. The beach communities are a little bit different than yes. the neighborhoods. Yes, absolutely. I'm at the 4th of July, and they're occupied primarily by renters. Right. And those people come into town, and they, they, they don't buy care. the fireworks stores, they buy fireworks, they have no idea what the right. ordinance is. Yeah. Nor do they really care. Right. To be honest with you. Yeah. No, care. I understand that. Do you think it's a not a non-winning battle? Do you think? Um. Well, my opinion is you eliminate fireworks altogether. Sure. Yeah. Well, um. As I mentioned, there's a couple of bills right now in the legislature going through the legislature to dealing with fireworks, and one of them specifically 
has to do with debris from fireworks landing on other people's property. I'm not sure about the details of the bill, but there's something up there. Now, this doesn't mean we can't work on local ordinance, but I'd want to know what the state's doing before we do ordinance, because otherwise we're going to be, we may, we possibly may going back that. and having to change our ordinance, yeah. and I don't want to have to do that, yeah. but the state's got a few things. Do you have a time frame? Well, they got to be done by June 17th, so it'll be by June. Yeah, what you, what's quickly, your opinion? Uh, quickly, by way of history, I mean, th this was enabled in, first in, in 2012 by virtue of state law right. change, and then each community has the right to either right. allow it or not. There was a, a long, I thought, fairly detailed conversation mm -hmm. uh, at this council mm -hmm. uh, regarding that issue, and there was conversation around uh, densely populated or densely settled areas of town and whether we could or we should um, have different standards for different parts of town. Uh, my recollection, and perhaps both of you were a part of that conversation, was that was ended up being too complicated. So uh, the decision was to tighten down and limit the number of days that it could happen but allow it town-wide. Right. None of us were on the council. Oh, no? No. Okay. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Uh, I remember those discussions, though, because I was one of the people who was in here saying I didn't want fireworks at all, <laughs> just because of the my concerns with fire and this and that. Um, the mindset of the council at the time, a majority of them anyway, was right. that um, yeah. you know, with within certain confines, it, it's fine. Right. Uh, that was the. That was the. That must have been the spring. This was adopted uh, March 12. Uh, yeah, 12. we were elected in 2012, but it right. was okay. November. Yeah. But uh, we can go back and look at some of that, those tapes if you're interested. But yeah, well, I just, like I said, it was something that that I had talked about two years ago. Um, I had talked to a couple of the fire department people who were the ones that sort of brought it forward, and I can think of one specifically who lives in an area um, of town that's not even a beach town, but lives over here, um, where the houses are, are closer together, um, some of the older houses are closer together, um, and she says it, like it makes her cringe. She's a fire official, and every fire, 4th of July, she gets upset because she's watching these things go off, and she's literally waiting for this next, for her house to catch on fire. Yeah, beyond beyond the fire issues, there's certainly basic nuisance. Right, absolutely. Um, I recall, and I, can, I experienced myself, my animals react oh, yeah. to, to them, and I, I recall a lot of testimony around that concern, right. and that's real. Well, right. yeah, or if you have babies. Babies, too. Yeah, and they wake up screaming. It's not fun. Um, just a couple of thoughts on this. Uh, one thing that you may be able to insert in the ordinance without too much difficulty, famous last words, <laughs> is um, if we have certain days that fireworks are allowed. However, if the fire danger on those days is above a certain level, there'll be no fireworks mm -hmm. because sure. that's that's an issue because I've got a neighbor who likes to shoot off fireworks other than the days that are allowed. And I have called the fire department in the past when it's been f high fire danger and this mm -hmm. person's setting off uh, fireworks. Um, and the other thing is to increase the fines. Right. But that's just a couple ideas. The real problem with enforcement is that yeah. by the time you get there, the call comes in, and by the time we get there, there's nowhere, no one to be seen. Or fireworks. Or fireworks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Or it's, it's a crowd of people, and you'll never be able to find the perpetrator right. unless you're right there to see it for your first hand. Right. But, right. but anyway, I don't know. Well, I think it's something to think, uh, uh, something to think about. Uh, obviously, like you said, it might be premature to do anything until... Yeah, and I apologize. No. I had two seconds to look up those bills. No, but no, I know no. there's, I want to say there's three bills maybe, but I'll do that. Yeah, will you let the me next know? Night. Yeah, I will. Yeah, so I, I don't know what the right thing to do with this is, Tom, if we're going to be waiting for her to get information to us and... Just push it to the next. of how we could actually treat, I mean, there's a whole educational component that may be problematic in terms of treating certain parts of town one way and other parts another way. Uh, there are vast differences between North and West Scarborough in, oh, yeah. 
in Oak Hill or beach communities in terms of density. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose you could do something based on lot size that would approximate density. Mm -hmm. um, but then the challenge will be to say you can do it here, but you can't do it there. Yeah, exactly. And again, That's it's enforcement. Sounds, it's almost yeah. easier yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me. If you pass a no, it's still a huge issue. Well, the reality is. Regardless of whether you were allowed it or not, it oh, would yeah. be no. Right. Well, you know what? Let's, um, you know, per my personal feeling on something like that is I'd like to weigh what we get back from some of the citizens um, before we sure. make any decisions on that. I mean, I, I've never been a fan of fireworks. Uh, They've not, I've seen so many bad things happen that I, it's, not, it's never been a big thing for me, but I know a lot of people that really enjoy it, and it's a tradition with their family, and they do it every year. Um, but I think that it's our duty to kind of look into it and make sure that, like we always say, all of Scarborough is protected and not just one group. Yeah. So... Uh, so maybe if you could get the yeah, legislative yeah. information yeah. back to us, and then we could put a feeling out to the people that live in this town, mm -hmm. um, and then let's just put it on the agenda for next month, and then we'll just get a report back, and that way anyone who's listening or you know is interested in this will at least be updated by what our progress is. Mike's taking copious notes. Hopefully there'll be a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that way we can sort of update people. Yeah. Does that sound good? Is yep. everybody okay with that? Yep. Good? Okay. I think you'll find that there's people that are strongly, strong feeling. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, just like any other issue that I've discovered in this town, <laughs> it's never just an easy thing. Um, that's why I think it's really important, and I've learned, to make sure we get adequate input from the citizens of Scarborough before we really start talking about doing anything or changing anything. Not that it really has a bearing on it, but we do have two retail establishments. Oh, right. I know. And that's not to say uh, you could certainly ban the use of them oh, yeah. and, and allow the sale. Mm -hmm. The lawful statewide mm -hmm. sale. But, you know, I thought about them when I, I, I... Again, I don't think it's a, it's a barrier to what you... When did that become legal, the sale of fireworks? Uh, the same state same law that permitted the right. use allowed the sale. Right that. around that time. Was it really happened as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why we had to. So those stores are all relatively new. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, in fact, one of them didn't come in until the last couple of years. I mean. Yeah, I don't know which one. One of them came on um, almost as soon as they were allowed. Right. Yeah. I forget which one it was. The one on Route 1. And then the other one, Phantom Fireworks, right. came a bit after. Yeah, it was just okay. Um, they moved into the existing space. Yeah. It didn't do much to it. This other one did some pretty major renovations, so I think there's a delay associated with that. Again, I don't think it's a barrier. You can allow the sale, but disallow the, the use. But that's a voice you might hear in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. That could uh, cause some issues. Okay. Um, do you guys want to talk about next, uh, our next meeting? Are there any anything on the table? So obviously we're going to talk about fireworks. We're going to talk about Hagen's Beach. We're going to talk about Pine Point. Uh, is there anything that either one of you feel strongly that you need to add? Hopefully all three of those are going to be full of information. So I would think that that would fill our time. Long Range Planning Committee, I'm not sure when they're going to be ready for some things to okay. do with uh, Higgins Beach and Pine Point okay. zoning, but that's down the line, wouldn't you say, Tom? Yeah, yeah, typically, it doesn't have to be this way, but typically things that Long Range Planning works on go, go to right to council. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, All right. It's, it's I didn't know. But ease and efficiency, that's not to say that they can't make a pit stop here, but typically they'll have okay. gone straight to council. Okay. Yeah. So that answers that question. So I think at this point, I think we just leave it. We'll have the same agenda next next month, unfortunately. But the good part is, the good thing about that is hopefully each one of those items will be full of information. All right. All right. So item number seven, adjournment. Is there a motion? So moved. All those in favor? So, Kate, if you can yeah. give me that time for the meeting on Thursday. Yeah, I'll get it. Um, <coughs> I, 